question for you all. Do you miss product regrets videos? Do you miss the era of anti-hauls, products that failed me? I sure do. I think that was a good time. And now when I look up product regrets, I swear all I get are these videos of people going, I regret buying this skincare product because it has given me the most beautiful glowing skin. So in today's video, I'm bringing back product regrets. Now as such, you know with this type of video, you know we gotta have a disclaimer. So let me quickly say this video will be all my own opinions. As always, if you see me pull out a product that you absolutely love, I highly encourage you to leave a comment in the comment section below. Let us all know why do you like this product? How do you make it work for you? After all, this is a video about beauty products, which are a very highly subjective topic. Now, it is kind of hard to make this kind of video. It's hard to come up with enough products, I personally feel. So I'm kind of pulling from a lot of different categories. If you'd just like to get some spoilers for what's in this video, timestamps and links are in the description box below. So let's go ahead and get into it. I wanna start kind of easy. I feel like most of you will probably very much understand why this isn't a fails video. This is the first and quite possibly only product that I ever received in PR from Supergoop, the Glow Setting 100% Mineral Powder, SPF 35. This is supposed to be a glowy powder. It is a glittery powder, it's glittery. It claims to have SPF 35, PA 3 plus protection. Kind of interesting to see the uh, PA disclosed here. There's quite a few powders in this kind of packaging where you're supposed to be able to twist this portion and it allows the powder to come up through the brush so that once you have it open, you can just tap it onto your skin. Aside from the packaging not really working all that well, I feel like it is way too easy to accidentally unscrew this product. Uh, my biggest problem with this is I just cannot help but worry about people using sunscreen powders. If you're a fellow skincare enthusiast, you probably already know that it is really, really hard to apply powder and reach the SPF on the packaging for multiple reasons. One, because it's hard to apply enough of that powder. Two, because powder doesn't really make an even layer. And that is something that is so important in sunscreen application. Listen, I see all these videos all over YouTube and Instagram of people saying, you are cleansing your face wrong. You are applying your serum wrong. It's really not that big of a, it's not that big of a deal. It's not that big of a deal if people are tapping their serum into their skin or rubbing it into their skin. What matters is, are you applying it? But correct sunscreen application is a big exception, a big exception. You really want to get that right because you really need to protect your skin from the sun. And I don't feel like I need to go off on the reasons for why that's important, at least in today's video, but it is important to get that right. And I just feel a powder doesn't allow you to get that right. I think it absolutely can be fine on top of correctly applied sunscreen and to Supergoop's credit. They do say on the side of the box, brush it on throughout the day to refresh your look. Yes, if you want to use this as a glittery powder for some reason, fine. But they still do say and reapply SPF and it's just not a good product category to use to reapply SPF. I'm not even sure about sun sticks. I think those are still kind of tricky, but at least it's a better option than a powder. And to just really check every box that ensured this was going to make it to today's fails video, I was rereading through the reviews on the Sephora website and listen, the very first review, this person says, I was excited to try this so that I could reapply my sunscreen every two hours like my doctor recommends. Your doctor really wants you to be applying a regular sunscreen or at least a sun stick, but not a, not a powder. These powders just don't give good, reliable, consistent protection from the sun. And you know, I just wish that the companies that sold these were more transparent about this. Then again, if I'm being honest with you, I've had this conversation with a few people on Instagram already. So uh, I have to admit, it, it feels like sunscreens are often where you see companies 
not putting their best foot forward. And I mean in terms of their advertising. I've seen entirely too many companies with mineral sunscreens in particular show that application with a pea size amount. You're not helping anyone show correct sunscreen application. And if your product leaves a white cast, maybe take it back to the drawing board. Let's do a makeup product next and also my only K-Beauty in today's video. It's a product that I love, I just don't love this newest reformulation. But I do feel like I really need to talk about this for that exact reason. I saw Lab Muffin talk about this. It's really hard to recommend products because you never know if the company is going to suddenly make a giant change in a product that you once loved is now <laughs> Oof, rough. So that kind of happened to me quite recently with these two newest Kaja Beauty Bentos. And if you follow me on Instagram, you may have seen I already tried to put the word out there because again, I have spoken so highly of these, but it's a new formula in their two newest releases. So the problem I have with this is that it seems they wanted to increase the pigment, but the problem is in the act of upping the pigment, they created some of the thickest eyeshadows. Let me try to explain what I'm talking about by giving a comparison of the last generation of Kaja's Beauty Bentos to this newest one. So this is Peach Madeline. I'll put that, I'll do a swatch of this one first. You can see how pigmented that is, but it's beautiful and it's smooth. This is the newer formula for comparison. Can you see how chunky it is? I've got a big chunk right there on my hand. This could look gorgeous on maybe oily eyelids or just younger eyelids in general, but my eyelids are dry. They can get a little bit of a, a kind of folds in them. And if you put a real thick layer of powder on my eyelids, it is just going to crack. <laughs> So it's not flattering and can you imagine the fallout? Can you imagine the fallout? I tried to use this one today for its night. I thought, what if I use a really, really light hand? And I, I had to clean up so much fallout. I had to completely redo my skincare, start all over again on the bottom of my face. And I feel like there's still some glitter. So much fallout for an ultimately not impressive look. Can you see that it's also kind of falling off my eyelids? Like it should be a little bit higher, but it just, falls throughout the day because it's too thick. Obviously there's three shades in here, but uh, the bottom shade, the usually a matte shade in these beauty bentos, I can't believe they've done this. <laughs> it's a matte with glitter in it. <laughs> Are you Too Faced? Who asked for this? The middle eyeshadow on these, it's okay. It's pretty, but these are $26 at Sephora, and I just don't think anybody would really be super happy to, you know, get a, a very disappointing shade, a matte with glitter, and one decent shimmer. It's just not why I buy these. I buy these, or at least the old generation, because I liked all three. I just don't understand why they decided to make such a huge change in the formula when they had such a winning formula. We're gonna kind of change gears on this next product because quite bluntly, this is a product I was sent by Dermalogica and I just can't use it. It has an allergen of mine in it, but that's not the reason I'm putting it into a fails video. Because of that, I can't try this product, which means I can't really have much of an opinion at all on the product. But I can have an opinion on the claims. So this box says on the front of it, clinically proven to give four years back. Dermalogica, your biggest flaw here is that you fail to realize, I can do math. I am absolutely not going back to 2019. No, thank you, ma'am. I remember what happened in 2020 and I am not living through that again. Clinically proven to give four years back. Now listen, I'm gonna be realistic for a second. I will step back from the sarcasm. I recognize that most people don't actually think this is going to be some kind of magical time traveling machine. However, I think that phrases like clinically proven 
People probably don't really pay a lot of attention to them, but I feel like it does have a subtle effect on the way that people perceive a product. Clinically proven, it sounds like the company knows something about this product, like they did a lot of research, they really proved something. But let me tell you, clinically proven does not mean anything. It's another one of those unregulated terms because I can tell you, as a scientist, we do not say things like clinically proven. Oh my gosh, do you understand how much we avoid that type of phrasing? Have you ever read a study? At the end of the study, we always write out our own limitations. We tell you the flaws in our own study. We suggest upcoming studies for other scientists to do to make up for our shortcomings. And I feel like part of it is, uh, again, kind of going back to that Dunning-Kruger effect I've talked about before, I feel like it's because as you do learn more and more in the sciences, you come to this realization of just how little we know. But I feel like for the average person who might not know that that's some kind of fake phrase, I feel like it could have a subtle influence. And, and again, clinically proven to give four years back, what scientific body would even be in charge of a statement like that? The commission from Umbrella Academy? The bigger the exaggeration, the bigger my beef. We are talking about Costco-sized beef that I have with this phrasing. It just means absolutely nothing. Now listen, I don't want to be unfair to this product. Again, I haven't tried it because I can't try it. It may be a wonderful product. But again, my problem with especially a lot of the more expensive products is I notice that they love to do these kind of things. They love to make these kind of claims that are just, they're kind of goofy. They're kind of goofy claims. And yet again, my, my point is, I feel like people may not really register the ridiculousness of the situation. You know, just imagine I wasn't my skincare enthusiast self and I was just somebody trying to go into Ulta to buy a nice moisturizer. I might pick this up, see, oh, it works immediately. Okay, uh, clinically proven. I'll buy this one. And I don't know how much more money, I really don't know how much this costs. Is it a lot? I bet it's a lot. But I'd be spending more than I need to on a moisturizer. That's my point. Again, if you have tried this, feel free to comment, but I, I got myself annoyed over the claims <laughs> yet again. Next up, we have a product that I have really, really mixed feelings about. So this is the Amica the Wizard Silicone Free Detangling Primer. They recently reformulated this. Typically, I like Amica. I feel like they have, they have some really good smelling hair care, if that's something that interests you. But my, my whole problem with this product is that I feel there is a huge discrepancy between the way Amika describes right here on the bottle to use this product versus what actually happened to me and apparently many other people in the reviews. Okay, so it's a detangling product. I need detangling products. I have very fine hair. It is very prone to tangling. I genuinely thought for most of my life that tangles were a, a, a problem that every one of us deals with. It wasn't until you know, I, I dated Ara where I realized <laughs> you can have long hair and not deal with the number of tangles that I have. I'm like Medusa. Instead of snakes coming out of my head, it's iPhone cables. Constant tangles. So I need detangling products. So uh, what this says on it is to uh, evenly mist throughout damp hair before detangling or blow drying. I mean, it sounds so simple, right? Spray it into your hair and blow dry. So I first tried this out on a Saturday. Thank goodness for that detail. I got out of the shower, sprayed my hair with this, not too much, just kind of, you know, a light misting of it, and then waited a little bit and then went to blow dry my hair. My hair type usually takes maybe one to two minutes at most to blow dry. It had been about five minutes of blow drying my hair. I am going, I've got, by the way, I do typically just blow dry my hair upside down. So I don't actually see what's going on at this point. Is that another quirk? Is that another not common thing? It's a, it's a fine hair thing. Anyway, so I am upside down. I pop up after five minutes. I look in the mirror and I immediately know what's going on. My hair isn't wet. It's that my hair is soaked in oils. My hair looked 
so dirty. It looked like I hadn't washed my hair in, I don't know, two weeks. Just oil, which I was confusing for still wet. It was just full of oil. I had to get back in the shower. Well, let me tell you the good. It actually is such an effective detangler that after I finished washing my hair a second time, I get out of the shower and I, I felt my hair and I went, I don't think I need to detangle it. It feels like it, it, it doesn't have any tangles in it. And sure enough, I, I didn't need any product. I still put in a little bit of heat protectant and blow dried my hair, but no tangles. So it's a very effective, I repeat, a very effective detangling mist but you can't follow these directions. And that's the problem. I was reading through the reviews and so many people had this experience that the, the way the reviews looked is you had people saying, this is not for fine hair. And then under that, you'd see someone say, this is not for thick hair. <laughs> and after reading enough of the reviews, you know, I'm going, is this for anyone's hair then? Well, yes it is. But the trick is you have to use the tiniest amount of this. In fact, what I figured out more recently is it actually works to just not use this, to use your regular detangler. And if you have a big tangle, spray a little bit of this only on that big tangle and it will get rid of it in moments. So yeah, in my flops video, I actually have an amazing product, but a product that is not explained well by the company. I really think that if they just figure out how to describe this product better if they, you know, <laughs> figure out its weaknesses and are willing to convey that to customers. This could actually be a holy grail product for people, but the way it's currently designed, the way it currently explains itself, people are going to hate this. Anyway, we've come to the end of today's video. I hope it's not too negative. I hope it is instead a helpful video. That's my intention. As always, feel free to share your thoughts in the comments. Let me know if you have any product regrets since we don't get enough of that on YouTube. Feel free to leave some comments about products that you have regretted. And that's it for today's video. If you enjoyed, make sure to like and subscribe. Have a wonderful weekend and I will see you all next time.